All right, let's talk about GI anatomy. Okay. So GI anatomy, uh, we have the retroperitoneal structures. Uh, the mnemonic is the sad puckers, uh, in which you have the aorta and IVC. Uh, let me just look at my one. So the way I have, uh, you know, thought about this thing is the, just think about the vessels, aorta and IVC, okay? And uh, that's all for the vessels. And now let's think about uh, all the other GI things. So you have the esophagus, you have the uh, duodenum, you have the pancreas, you have the colon, and you have the rectum. So group them. Third group is going to be your suprarenal, which is adrenal, basically. You have the renals, which are the kidneys. And you have this uh, ureters, which are coming from the kidney, and you have the bladder. Okay, so if you want to read that, we can read the sad puckers here. The, you have the suprarenal, adrenal glands, aorta, IVC, uh, D for duodenum, second through the fourth part. So it's not including the first part. So second, so two, three, four, they are included, not the first part. Pancreas is included except the tail. The tail is not retroperitoneal. The ureters and the nice one, but included the colon, only the ascending and descending colon are included. The kidneys, the esophagus, only the thoracic portion, okay? And the rectum, which is only partially, uh, uh, partial rectum. And then which partial rectum they're talking about? Not the proximal, but distal. Mid-distal, mid-to-distal. Just remember distal, okay? Uh, here, what do we have? So, uh, one thing here, one uh, most importantly, this thing is the right side and this is the left, right? So you will see IVC, inferior vena cava, is going to lie on the right side of that vertebral body. So whenever you have, whenever you have a, a image. IVC will always be on the right side. And aorta is always on the right, uh, left side. So left side aorta, okay. Other than that, some clinical significance. For example, if you have a rupture of aorta, then you're going to have a shock. If you have a rupture of pancreas okay uh, how are you going to rupture your pancreas basically you have MVA motor vehicle accidents in a malposition seat, seat belts are staring so if a child who has a malposition seat belt or an adult who has a staring up front it causes a rupture of the pancreas that rupture of the pancreas is not going to cause such a bleeding will it's not going to cause that much of a bleed that can lead to shock. That will only cause you a retroperitoneal hematoma. Okay. Not the shock, but retroperitoneal hematoma. So look at the, looking at this, what um, uh, retroperitoneal structures are posterior of the peritoneal cavity. Injuries to the retroperitoneal structures can cause blood gas accumulation in the retroperitoneal space right that's pretty much what we have here but if you have let's say you know uh, if you have a blood in the retroperitoneal we call as a as only retro peritoneal bleed right but if you have a blood in in intraperitoneal cavity you will call it uh, hemoperitoneum and if you have a gas in the uh, intraperitoneal cavity, you will call it pneumoperitoneum. These are just definitions, not to worry much about it. But I, ta I talked about aorta and what it's going to cause in pancreas, what that is going to cause. One more thing about spleen. If you rupture spleen, what that going to cause? Spleen is, uh, again, spleen is not retroperitoneal, it is intraperitoneal. But if you were going to rupture spleen, 
Actually, it's going to come up later. How about this? It's going to come up on the next page. Wait, is it on the next page? Maybe I messed up. I don't know. <laughs> Give me... Oh, yeah, I see. It. This is right here. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about spleen here, as I talked about it here. But we are done with this. these retrovisional structures. And we're done with this page, but we are still left with one. A little thing above so let's talk about and this thing let me change color pancreas and spleen embryo this is pancreas and this is spleen so pancreas is derived from the foregut the ventral what did I say about ventral anterior pancreatic bud contributes to the uni uncinate or yeah, uncinate process both the ventral it means anterior tarsals mean posterior buds they contribute to the pancreatic head and the main pancreatic duct great there are two pathologies here one is the annular pancreas a for angle a for annular something is messing up with the angle like it's not going through the right angle instead of coming from the back side it's coming at the front but let's talk about it abnormal rotation of the ventral which was anterior right uh bud forms a ring of the pancreatic tissue which would encircle the second part of the duodenum may cause duodenal narrowing um, and that when you do the duodenal narrowing when you have the duodenal narrowing it's going to cause vomit and uh, associated with anything that is duodenum is going to be associated with down syndrome okay uh, yeah, so next thing is the divism. Divism is like two things. You know, when you divide divism, so here's the problem. You have the ventral and dorsal parts. They fail to fuse, okay, at seven weeks of development. Common anomaly, mostly asymptomatic, but it may cause chronic abdominal pain and or pancreatitis, okay? So this one, uh, divism, if... If, if you have a two structures they are not so they're they are separately you know um, secreting the material out there's a high chance that you can get the chronic pancreatitis uh, so that's what the uh, that's what they talked about but now let's talk about spleen spleen arises in the mesentery of the stomach dorsal mesogastrium hence mesodermal so spleen is mesodermal but it has a foregut supply celiac trunk supplied by celiac artery so this is really important that the celiac although it is the foregut we are talking about the celiac was the foregut right but it also supplies the mesodermal structure the only one structure in this mesoderm is the spleen that it supplies so spleen is supplied by celiac trunk and uh, leading to a splenic artery okay so but if you have a rupture of spleen If you rupture the spleen, what's going to happen is, first of all, how are you going to rupture? Again, same thing, MVA, motor vehicle accidents, or abdominal blunt abdominal trauma. That can rupture spleen. But as soon as you rupture spleen, there is going to be a lot of blood going into your intraperitoneal cavity, causing hemoperitoneum. That is going to cause shock. That is one thing. Second thing is, whenever the blood goes into your intraperitoneal cavity, you are basically messing up with the phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve, yeah. you irritate the phrenic nerve. As soon as you irritate the phrenic nerve, now you have a referred pain to the shoulder. So referred pain to the shoulder, that is called the Keher sign. Okay. Uh, that is due to irritation of the phrenic nerve due to the blood. Uh, that's all for the spleen. Moving on here. Okay, uh, important gastrointestinal ligaments. 